Develop the patience to do nothing but wait. Stay tuned traders, we'll be right back. Good day traders, Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. It's Monday, we've already had an explosive move to start the week off with gold. Friday was a huge day in the markets and a lot of traders uh, send me emails uh, just letting me know they captured 100, 125, some traders more than that, some other traders captured less than that. And again, reinforcing the concept that it's not about trying to scalp pips every day, but we're well aware that there is 50 pips, if not every session on gold right now, but almost every single day, at least one great, simple, scalable textbook setup from the higher the low of the day for 50 pips or more, as we've seen in gold. Gold has been giving off probably 50 pips two, three times a day over the last few weeks. And by the looks of things, it will probably continue to do so. Today, we're gonna answer some questions regarding uh, being patient and waiting, patience, talking about this and again reviewing our simple system. We're gonna talk about a little bit about overtrading, uh, questions again about zero stress trading. We talked about that last day. Asymmetrical risk reward, level three type of trading and then the difference of one, two, three versus three pushes. So just coming back to clarifying some just simple concepts and we're gonna tie all this in together we're going to talk about the box concept again and the three th things that markets do. 15 minute charts. Again, we talked a little bit last day about fine tuning some of those entries on shorter time frames at the very extremes, but under only certain circumstances. I don't want to dive too deep into that because I don't want traders starting to go down to smaller time frames because I think that that can lead you down a, a bit of a vortex that can get you into trouble. But pound, pound Aussie, again, some of the pound crosses, other pairs last week had some fantastic, very simple trade setups right at the open of the sessions for 50 pips. Mainly, and again, just to disclaim myself, I, I have only been trading gold the last month. I've had one or two other trades in the last month, but I have only been trading gold. And the reason why I focus on, on these three pairs, but mainly only gold right now, is because of the amount of movement that gold has been given. The spreads are tight, they're two pips, one and a half, sometimes three in the outside hours, but mainly two pips. But gold moves all the time. Uh, and I find that gold has just been very consistent. Uh, a lot of traders not sure about the numbers, I use the same numbers on there. And for those that, of people who have asked what I mean by round numbers, the sweet spots indicator is down below. It's a free download, double zeros, 50s, quarter levels. Uh, we're gonna talk a bit about more about that. And before we get into it too far, again, just wanna say thank you to a, a ton of great feedback, a lot of emails, uh, questions, comments. Uh, thank you again. Thank you for your patience. I'm, I'm just slowly trying to get through stuff as well as answer questions. A ton of screenshots, uh, some great trades. Few people still um, struggling with some challenges, but that's trading. You're going to go through, uh, you know, again, the process that I outlined for myself has been designed at, at recognizing a lot of the, the characteristics that I needed to rewire through habits, through behaviors, through routines, where sabotage occurred, how that occurred, what my triggers were. Everything about my timing window, even today, you know, I I've been saying this the last four weeks, my window is really now down to pretty much two hours now. And when I'm done, I shut off my charts. I don't even have my charts up because I don't even want to be looking and seeing a possible setup outside of that window. Once I've got my pips, I'm done. I lock it in and that's it. I come back with the next session, start fresh, start with the day zero approach again in mind in terms of my approach to the markets. You're only one trade from ever blowing yourself up. And if you're serious about scaling your business, you approach each session, each trade on its own merits and according to your process and your rules and you, you're a business. You, you think like an algorithm. You're just cookie cuttering everything, which comes back to zero stress trading. So again, focusing on the high and the low of the day. If you've been following me long enough now, and even if you haven't been following that long, I'm mainly only focused at the high and the low of the day after they've done the stop hunt. They are going to hit the stops. They might hit them before the session starts. They might hit them 
at the session opening. They might hit them in the equities hour, but they are going to hit the stops. And the reason why I am absolutely certain about this is because it's a zero-sum game. There's one winner and one loser. And if you're not the winner, that means you're the other one. And so my whole focus is making sure that my, I put my positions at the market when I know there's a high probability or possibility that their work is done at the top or the bottom. They've cleared out orders. They've, they've stopped traders out either a break even or with a loss, making sure that the most majority of traders either lose, don't make any money, or don't even trade. Or if they're chasing stuff back and forth, up and down inside of the highs and lows that they're getting chopped up, heading into the gap time and some of those as we've talked about there are some good trading opportunities there but again looking at how I can duplicate and have simplicity day in and day out I know today I'm going to do the same thing I did on Friday that I did on Thursday that I did on Wednesday nothing is going to get in my way nothing is going to stop me from keeping my routine as simple and clean as possible I don't care if I get 25 and 25 and the market moves 150 an hour later I could care less you can make a lot of money just on 25 pips a day. These trades are scalable. When we're at the high and the low, these are trades that I can come back and duplicate. And when my results are consistently showing that constant growth, I can keep increasing in size. My confidence is there. I'm not engaging in a rational, impulsive, erratic activity that ultimately gets you back to square one. You blow up your account. You start over again. You say, why did I do that? So many traders have been making great gains and the problem when you're making these great gains is you get overconfident you start to take on a bit more risk you start to take a few more trades you take trades outside of your trading system and it's almost a wiring to to ultimately challenge the market that we are bigger than the market and that we're gonna we're gonna outsmart the market and we're gonna be a high roller and ultimately one of those trades just one of those little trades can turn into a massive, massive big loss that just spirals out of control. You average into losers, it takes off. All these things that ultimately, as we all know, can destroy your trading account, can destroy your, your psychological capital. So again, coming back to duplicating everything that I know works and that I can keep carving out my piece every single day and scaling it up in size. And, and I talk about zero stress trading. Zero stress trading to me is when I'm able to get into the market and the market automatically moves almost instantly in my favor when I'm at the high or the low and I know they're going back to the other side of that range whether it's 25, 50 pips and that's how I like to trade. I don't like to be sitting at the screen for hours on end trying to scalp a few moves, getting caught into poor quality trades. We know, you all know that when these markets lock in a high or lock in a low and they're gonna go back fast, it's over in four, five, six bars. As we saw on Friday, there was 250 pips, which was an exact measured move of that rectangle of Friday's high and low. So again, one winner, one loser. I am quite happy. It's easy for me to be really patient because I'm not gonna do anything until they do the stop hunt. So I sit at the screen, I've got some alerts set, but that window, that timing window, and again, 8 to 11 p.m. Asia, 2 to 5 a.m. Europe, London, 8 to 11 a.m. New York, New York Eastern Standard Time. So again, wherever you're at, look at your, your candle times, whatever they're configured to, if it's New York time or GWT, GMT, just Google where you're at in the world. That timing window will probably increase your odds of success massively just by sticking within that window. And again, we're looking at Asia, London, New York is potentially one of each one of those three sessions potentially putting a high of the day and a low of the day in place. So, you know, if London if London works up, so we're talking, we'll talk about the one, two, threes right now. First of all, if we're in a box, we have our high and our low. We talk about the three things that markets do. I'm gonna use a Peter Brandt candle. We could call this 16 weeks, we could call it four hours, we could call it, you know, eight, 12 hours. When we get a market that's up here, so they've obviously broken a previous high-low boundary. That market is either, it's a breakout at this point. It is either going to reverse and engulf for a false break, reversal. 
which will most likely come back to the other side fast and get traders who are in the money. Or this market will continue on a breakout, which is why Peter Brand is a classic chartist and a breakout trader. He trades weekly charts, monthly charts, and he looks for you know, 8, 12, 16 week consolidations that form certain geometric patterns as defined in Schaubacher, Edwards and McGee. And when they break out, they explode because this compressed volume, when it does break over on the longer time frame charts, will explode out usually for a trend trade. Now if this is on our shorter time frame, it's the same type of behavior, except in a trend trade, often if it's at the beginning of Europe, we get a one, two, three, it breaks out, or at the end of the Asian session, the stop pump will usually come back one, two, three, before they resume the trend back in the other direction. Now it may be three pushes, they might go up in three pushes over that three hour window, which again, the difference between a one, two, three, and three pushes is that a one, two, three, is that move where we either break out or we go to the stop hunt, one, two, three, to the high of the day, as opposed to three pushes. Now this is similar on a smaller time frame, but when we get three pushes on our 15 minute charts, now we're potentially locking in a high for a, double, a higher double top, an extended M pattern, could be a shortened M pattern. That's our type, type three. 20 to 50, 25 to 50 pips above that range, whether it's Asia, London, New York. So again, a breakout of a previous session's high or low. We could be at the high of the week, the low of the week, but again, the timing window. Each session to me is the same. I'm going back and I look at each, each session. Where are the highs? Where are the lows? We talk about this. My green marker's not working. This is where the money is, it's up here. So if they go further and it's a trend trade, that doesn't mean that even though it's trending that it's not a 50 pip stop hunt. And guess what, this guy who's in the money on the trend trade, guess where they're gonna come back to later in the US session or in the gap time? You've seen this enough times. Everybody gets hit for at least a break even stop hunt or a reversal trade going in the other direction. And the third things that markets do is they break out they pull back and they go into a trading range, which is sometimes what we'll see in the gap time, but also we'll see that into the rollover from the US into the Asian session sometimes. And occasionally if we're on a level three, right, we could see the range bound trade happen up top. These are where traders sometimes get chopped up. They, they sell the first peak, it comes down, it hits it again, it comes back in the third time at the end of the 12 candle window and they either don't want to take that trade or they are patient and they're waiting after the stop hunt for that re-entry into the peak formation back in line with the dealer's trend. So again, the difference between a one, two, three and a three pushes, the one, two, three typically will be a stop hunt, but on any time frame, when you see three bars, one, two, three to the higher to the low, and it's on a third leg, the 33 trend for my friend Malik, <clears throat> those trades happen all over the place. But on our 15 minute charts, if we get three pushes extending a range or jamming in, so we could have the London session be working down into the low and three pushes, there's our squeeze build up. We get a little reversal, then stop on one, two, three down at the beginning of the US session and that market explodes up. So again, one, two, three is the three bars. The three pushes is what we get over the larger movement of that 15 minute chart over two, three, maybe four hours. So the timing window is critical because again, we know that they are gonna move the markets when these equity markets open and especially gold when that New York equities market hour prints, I can pretty much safely say that the market, if it has not done so, it will lock in a higher low and it will move. Round numbers, double zeros and 50. So again, those 50 pip boxes. So for those of you who have asked about gold, where you usually will still start in a 50 pip box. The point that's important about that is recognizing that the double zeros and 50s are potential areas for the market to trade off of as, a, as an area of support or resistance. If it moves off 50, it could find support at double zeros. If we're testing the previous day's low or a previous session higher low and it's 
you know, 100 pips below, they may be moving between 50 and 50, 100 pip ranges. So again, the double zeros and 50s are significant, but most importantly, the high and the low are where the money is. So if we have a high or a low staggering those, those round numbers, then potentially one of those round numbers essentially will become support or resistance once they break through one of those barriers. So if it's a, like we saw this morning, a measured move, they traded up into 50 and went straight down to Friday's low, which broke through the double zeros, continued past the 50 for a big move down. Again, a gol engulfments and pin hammers. Uh, a couple people mentioned to me on Friday, pin to the high in Asia, pin to the high in London. Those were session highs and highs for the day in a downward, potentially downward moving market. We looked at that on the daily chart. We knew there was going to be possible big move. Pins to the high through the high, the previous high. That's a stop hunt, especially at the beginning of the session. Beginning of the, the 12 candle window, pin to the high in an engulfment. That's a high. I'm locking it in. I'm hitting that. I'm trading it, especially when it's at round numbers. And then we're looking, where's the other side of the range? Is it down at double zeros? They may go down there like they did in Asia and, and not take out the low, but they go down far enough to get traders who were long off the bottom, maybe on a smaller time frame or just to the low of that last bull candle before the move occurred. So as you get closer to your target, be paying attention as we've talked about. If, I, if a market spends you know, more than two candles at a level or if I'm trailing that down to capture profit, and I've been in that trade for half an hour, I'm not gonna quiver over five or 10 pips. If it's moved and it's hesitating, I'll lock it in. It's a member, one winner, one loser. It's you against them. So I wanna make sure when I'm up 40 pips that I'm gonna get something and get paid for that session. You get paid for performance, put it in your bank account. If you're sitting there holding on to it, be at break even. Uh, if you have a trailing stop, don't be surprised if they don't pin up into that. If you're again, if you've been following these markets, they will pin up into trail into trends to get people who are trailing their stops, which is typically why I don't trail trail trades. I will be at break even, and I'll either lock it lock it in if it doesn't hit my profit target. I'll just exit the trade. I do not trail the trades because I am well aware that they will pin up into strong movements sometimes. You might be up 45, 50 pips, you're going for more. They pin up 25, maybe 30 pips, you get stopped out. And meanwhile, you watch it go 75 to 100. So I do not, I just make a decision that I'm gonna be tar setting a target. I always preset my targets. Occasionally, I will adjust that in a strong market such as Friday, but I make sure I'm taking stuff off and I'm moving my stop only to the next increment if the market's exploded through 50 and going through 75, I lock in that 50. So just to reinforce patience, I'm gonna wait until they get to the strike zone. So if I can't see that on the chart, if, I, if I'm having trouble determining, you know, where's my high, where's my low, have they already had three pushes up when they get there, is it gonna be a high of the day? Or have they been working down and they've locked it in and gone up to the high, is that gonna be a trend trade? So, but I'm gonna work out here. Why? Because I'm looking for asymmetrical risk reward. I wanna be targeting, you know, maybe three times my risk. If this is one R, this could be three R. Maybe more, depending on the box we're in, depending on how tight my fill is, this could be five R. So, and again, when I'm up here, if I've got a reason to enter this trade or down here, it's one bar, so when they, if I'm triggered into a trade and I'm at round numbers, I know right away when I'm wrong. So when I'm wrong, I wanna be out because I know I can recover from a 15 or a 20 pip stop out. I know that because if I'm getting 50 pips on a trade, the most important thing I can do is get out of a loser as fast as possible. And I've mentioned this before, if it starts coming back and isn't behaving the way it should be, as we know when these go, they move, boom, boom, boom or they consolidate underneath or on top of your trade without it. They, they don't trade against you, but they don't move. They consolidate sometimes for up to an hour, depending on where we're at in that weekly template. But I know I'm not, if it's coming back and it's the wrong trade and I recognize that, I'll just cut the trade. I don't wanna wait till it hits my, my stop. So that to me is zero stress trading. And again, I can handle taking that loss because I know that we're gonna get 50 pips probably two, three times a day in terms of the trade opportunities. So get that out of your brain, move on to the next trade. 
You know, was there something I did wrong? Was I in too early? Was I was I just anxious or was I patient? It was a good setup. I hit it. I, it was just I, I made a mistake or or I got in, you know, maybe 15 minutes early, something like that. So what? Move on to the next trade. Be patient. You're going to get 50 pips. But the asymmetrical risk reward is the important part. Remember I talked about medium price. I want to wait till they go out outside. One, two, three, up high, hit the stops. They might take 20 minutes, half an hour before they get up there. But the last run, boom, they put a pin up. They might reverse right away too on a smaller time frame. But I want to know that they've stopped out traders who were in the money. That tells me if they're going up high, that they're going back up because they want to go down. And I'm not talking about a trend trade. Again, the timing window is what tells us that. We saw this on fr Friday. We've seen it a couple times. We saw it this morning in gold. If they go sideways for the first hour or inside without moving too much, that's the potential for an explosive day. So you want to be paying attention to which way the pins are. If they're stop hunting high, they're probably going to roll it over and go down low in the equities hour for an explosive move. So again, level three, if you're not sure what level three is, level three typically is where you're going to get trade, trades moving back and forth in both directions, hitting the high, hitting the low, because they're putting a peak formation in or a bottoming formation. And I believe it was uh, Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday we had three three pushes. Yes, and, and so we the, the market came down Monday, Tuesday, went back up on Wednesday, Thursday put in the peaks and they dropped it down and went sideways on Friday. So even though the market went down and came back up, we had three pushes over the next three days that put in a triple peak for that level three. And that, when they dropped it down and went sideways underneath, underneath the peak formation for the move down on Friday. So three pushes versus a one, two, three. Very distinct, again, on the 15 minute charts, we're talking about peak formations. That's what puts the high in, that's what puts the low in. When a market goes and gives you a V bottom or a V top, and then they go sideways, that's your peak formation. So if we look at Asia and we've got one in place, we might get one in London. They could still go back up. But when the session opens, I can take from that that we're possibly now going to be looking at putting a low end in London or continuing that move into New York and possibly have a stop hunt back up in that session. So hopefully that makes sense. But again, developing the patience. So coming back to something I mentioned last week, some traders asked about, I am only looking for one really good trade. Occasionally, I, I may get in, take, take one off, and get in the second move with a second trade in that session. But ideally, I'm only looking for one or two really good trades. And they're usually, that first one's over fast. The second one is for the continuation, and that may be a little bit longer, but usually when it's a stop hunt trade, they still move very quickly and without a lot of heat against them. But my, my primary focus is to try and only take one, two maximum trades a session and they need to be at the top or at the bottom. Uh, engulfments, pin hammers, again remembering stop hunt, trap, trade. The stop hunt is the fast impulsive move and we talked about understanding all the tricks in live time. That's what traps a lot of traders. Sometimes that stop hunt is a trade. We saw a great one, I believe it was Thursday. They went up 50 pips at the beginning of Europe to the high of Wednesday. So again, even though that was a stop hunt, it was still a trade. It was a 50 pip move and then they came back down, rolled it over, came back down before moving again in the US session. So stop hunts will move fast and aggressive. Again, coming back to the whole important part of the timing window, Markets are moving around and they're, you know, they're, they're, they're moving and people get in, but then they sort of go into a 25 pip sort of consolidation or lull or they maybe a 50 pip box, but they're, but they're, you're getting filled inside and not really going anywhere. And all of a sudden the 12 candle window kicks in, the markets take off and do 50 pips in 45 minutes, which is again a one, two, three on a 15 minute chart. So just doing that math in your head, understanding that rotation of the timing window, whether you're on a shorter time frame or not. 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, one hour, equities hour. So even though there, people have asked about using shorter time frames for better fills, you could be on a one minute chart and it may take 30 minutes to get that entry and that peak formation in place and your fill is not too dissimilar from the 15 minute chart. So 
understanding that timing window and where you're at at the numbers and have the stops been hit are critical for traders to know where to enter at these areas. So hopefully you got some value from today's video traders. You've ended the week last week hopefully on a strong note. Do the same at the beginning of the week. Start off doing everything right. Take, take the appropriate risk for the trade. Keep it simple. Focus on one or two really high quality setups. Take your pips and then be done. Go about your day and go do something fun. Come back for the next session and do it again. Zero stress trading. Take a piece out every single session. Scale it up in size. Don't try to keep trading because the market will end up getting it back from you. So we'll look at uh, this morning and Friday's charts. Again, thank you for a ton of great feedback. Amazing results. Friday was a huge day. And just to reinforce and close on that, you could have not traded all week and waited for a really golden trade set up on Friday and made more pips probably in one day than some traders made all last month. So keep it simple. Focus on quality. Focus on trades that you can scale it up in size that are going to move fast, cause you zero stress, and that you can duplicate and bump it up and get bigger. Have a great trading session. Start the week off strong and may the markets go with you. Good day traders. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading and uh, again just continuing our discussion on being patient and focusing on the best trade setups and uh, just looking at the daily chart again on goal. We did see that move come to fruition on Friday and then continue this morning and just looking at some of the levels that are in place on gold where this trade possibly could continue. We have stops under the uh, month of July from the low of July and then of course extending down from the original breakout on that triple bottom formation that happened in June. So again uh, 17,500 level could possibly be an area where this market could still head towards. These uh, these levels have been cleared out and traders of this market, uh, again, gold has just continued to uh, provide huge opportunities and uh, again, I think it will continue to do so. When we look at our 15 minute chart from Friday and we go back to our basic model looking at the high and the low of the day, we talked about, again, just looking at who's in the money. We see that the U.S. session on Thursday had a sell. The market pulled back, it sold down a second time and into the rollover they came down again for a third push without taking out the middle structure. The market then proceeded to go one, two, three just prior to the open of the Asia 12 candle window. A little doji at the high and then they pinned up into traders who possibly were short at the end of the uh, equities hour, the uh, trade that moved down that uh, 100 pip range. They've stopped hunted high and then locked in that high of the day. Now, we don't know that at this particular time, but they've engulfed that high structure. And we did have our session low, our low of the day in place. So again, you can see structure, we can see rectangle, we see the pin. Uh, this was a trade that I did take and uh, other traders also mentioned they saw that, they took that trade. And again, we see that market come down towards the middle low, but also the the low of the the day from the beginning of the Asian uh, 12 candle window. And then we see the market pull back into consolidation. So we had one leg down, two legs down. They came up and pinned through the low before eventually putting a new high of the day in place. And then the market pulled back again inside. So we talk about if you're not at the high or the low, you're inside. And so the market has given us a high in the gap time. So they've moved their market down. They've taken out the low of the day. They've pulled it back inside. They've pinned the low, which again we talked about last day was a possible anchor point. If they worked high in three pushes that we could possibly look for a measured move down on Friday night. We saw that set up on the daily chart. And this market did not disappoint. This was a massive trade opportunity. But again, coming back to the next window, we have a high and a low. And we see the market come down and then one, two, three, pinning the high. Again, a lot of traders saw this, took the trade, sat through, some sat through this consolidation, others fought for a better fill at the round numbers. But again, you can see even when you're in the right trade, the market sometimes will go sideways. We had one push, two pushes, and then a one, two, three, a 33 for my friend Malik. Again, he loves these 33 trades. They're everywhere. And again, if you're going to see this market 
put a pin to the high and it doesn't seem to be going anywhere, you got to be thinking next session trade, which would, would again either lead you to believe they're going to come back up one more time or if they've locked in that high underneath the peak formation, do not counter trend the peak formation that this could end, indeed become a 33 opportunity. The market dropped down, taking out the again the lows from the Europe session. So identifying trap volume up high, trap volume up high. Then they drop it down, they go sideways, pull it back inside bar. The pin doji is another anchor point in the 12 candle window. They bring traders up high. And then boom, explode through. And again, coming back to our concepts of measured moves. We have a high and a low. The market did three full expansions of that geometry. So when we see the pin and the pin starts to work peak formations, we take that as our structure. The market exploded through for two full expansions of that range. Now sometimes if it's an Asian session or something else, you might find that they hit the low of the day and that's the reversal point for the move back up. And again, that comes back to our 12 candle window. So congratulations, a number of traders had an exceptionally, exceptionally good Friday. So coming into today's session, we saw that market again creep back up at the beginning of the equities hour. The equities hour put the low of the session in one push, two pushes, three pushes up, putting a high in place. Then this morning, they come up and they work the high, put a peak formation and drop it sideways, break down 50 pips before the equity hour opens. So again, talking about our round numbers, they pinned up into 50 into the short trade. So we have our anchor point low and a pin to the high. And again, another example of a measured move retesting the previous day, previous sessions low. And again, you can see the two, three full expansions of the range of that measured move down. And again, coming back now and identifying, we have one push down, two pushes down, a possible third push already in place, an engulfment of a low structure. So depending on how they behave at the beginning of the 12 candle window, they may come back down one more time into this trade. We are at the previous day's low, so currently we're working back into that low. Although we have had three bursts, uh, we still may have another burst in this, as this may be one combination in that second leg. Time will tell which direction they go. But again, three pushes. We have profitable trades from the Asian session. They've taken out Friday's low. We've got Tra traders in the money up top so this market could continue to move up strongly to hit the stops or retest down low for a move back up squeezing in the lows of the session again looking at our pound aussie we had some similar setups we had the asian session pinned to the high and they put in a higher middle structure in that session giving us possibly our three push pattern up high before engulfing it so again, having a bit of a bias before we head into the Europe London 12 candle window, the market came down before, again, one big burst and a bear candle taking out the high of those lower structures inside and then rolling back down as we headed into the London open. That market came down before creeping sideways. And again, this is a difficult market to trade for myself. I sometimes find these trend trades hard to trade. Uh, and again, as I mentioned, I have not been trading the pound Aussie hardly whatsoever in the last four weeks, primarily only because my focus has been on gold. But when you get a market like this and it runs away and you don't find something tradable, if you haven't traded the stop hunt, the vertical stop hunt up top. So again, just identifying if you get a, a fast, aggressive move in that first hour, one, two, three, four, there's your one bar stop. When they break that, that bear pin to the high, that high bar. There's your one bar stop. If your if your thesis is at this market, it's a downward market. You want to get in. All of a sudden, they come back 25 to 50 pips into the trend. There's your opportunity to re-enter that trend. The market consolidates underneath before exploding and continuing on. But in that U.S. session, again, we have one push, two push. The market then starts to work the high. We have an anchor point, one push, two push, three pushes, and an engulfment. We have the engulfment of that third bull push. 
at the end of our first hour, the first candle of the equities hour, boom, explodes down through. They pull back and continue that move for a 75 pip move to the low to close out the session. So again, if you if you feel like you're chasing something or you've missed a trade, be patient. That market will come back and give you an opportunity. We get one push, two push, one, two, three into that third level. So again, they came down two pushes, but now they're working it up as we head into the 12 candle window. Market's down, but then one push, two push, three pushes, engulfment. Equities hour, 50 pips or more down through on a measured move. So again, coming back to our geometry from that first leg down, we get two full expansions of that range. Sorry, three full expansions of that range. And that U.S. session, we can do the same thing with our high and our low anchor point. So we have our pin low, the high of the session. We get two full expansions of the range. The pound also was was a very a similar opportunity, except in this particular case, we had a very clear-cut stop hunt to the high of the day. Uh, this trade, though, when it came back down, this middle fill for traders was a, a bit of a... Uh, a no-go zone. They weren't sure whether they should take that. Some of them, uh, quite a few questions regarding this. But at the end of the day, again, if you're not sure, you wait. But as this market rolled over, that the understanding, people think that they've gone long for the retest of the high. Once they come back inside of this bull candle, understanding that this pin trader is now trapped, and the same psychology applies to this pin. Anchor point, measured move two full expansions of that pin high for a measured move down and then also coming back into our US session the stop hunt they can they've extended 25 pips outside of that Asia London range in one push two push three pushes double pin engulfment at the low heading into our 12 candle window traders taking this long but then also being aware in you're in this move you're looking for the move back towards or near the high of the London session, we get three distinct pushes that end on a small bull. Small bull pin at the high of the day. So again, you're in this trade for at least an hour or more, and the market is gone in three bursts, and you're just outside of that 25 pip candle range. You're trading into round numbers. Be either be taking money off the table or be looking for the opportunity now to enter that trade in the opposite direction where they would retest the low of the day. Stop hunt back up in three pushes as opposed to a one, two, three. So again, a one, two, three in that first hour that turns into three distinct pushes to the high of the day, three pins, this, this high bull in the middle, that little bar at the top is your entry for the short trade. The bull pin confirms that you're at break even. We have a middle structure in place. So again, questions about the middle structure. That's what gives us our M or our W on the third leg for the fast 50 pip move. You'll notice again, creeping trends, taking two, three hours, and then 50 pips and four or five bars. So hopefully you got some value out of today's video traders. Highs and lows, working from the highs and lows, and again, high and low of the session. So we're not at the high of the day, but three distinct bursts. We are at the high of the session. We're at the high of the U.S. session in the third hour of our 12 candle window. We have a 50 pip range pretty much once it clears out the low of the day. 25 tradable pips back up that ended in three bursts and a 50 pip stop hunt. 33 for my friend Malik again. Have a great trading session. Keep it simple. Start the week off strong. Stick to the best quality trade setups. And may the markets Hi, go Hi traders, with you. it's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburktrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7 Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets. And this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined and may the markets go with you.